All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So today, this is going to be a video on XCPNG, which is an open source, free, if you will, um, hypervisor. So like a virtualization platform like VMware. And in fact, actually, I'm going to install this XCPNG as a replacement for my VMware ESX. And the reason for that is because, well, one, I got a new piece of hardware to run my home lab on. It is a old... Dell Precision desktop that has a two socket uh, Xeon in it and 128 gigs of RAM. It's very similar to the one that I have currently that runs my VMware ESX 5 something, 5, don't remember the exact version of ESX that's on it, but it's older. And um, you can't download the newer versions of ESX anymore because Broadcom bought VMware and I think they got rid of that feature for people. So I'm going to go with XCPNG, um, mostly because... Well, one, I can't use VMware, but I don't know if I really want to anymore anyways. This one actually has some better functionality in it for free that I can get um, in this product than I couldn't get in VMware. So um, I'm hoping that I can do some backups. Looks like it has backup built in, and VMware backups are a little bit uh, clunkier unless you have a good backup solution for that. So we'll see what this looks like. But the uh, point of this video is that we're going to go ahead and, and get uh, the XCPNG installed on them on a memory stick, so a little USB stick, and then we're gonna go ahead and install it on this uh, Dell Precision. So the first thing we need to do is go to xcpng.org. We're gonna click the download link, which is really just scrolling down the page till you get to easy to install. And I already downloaded the ISO. So the next thing I would need to do is burn that ISO, if you will. Nobody burns anything anymore because everything's a USB stick. But back in the day, you would burn to a, to a DVD or something like that. Today, you pretty much just uh, extract the files on a, on a USB stick and then set the, the boot pieces. So we're going to use a tool called Rufus. Rufus is, there's a link here on the site. So if you go to xcp-ng.org and there's a Rufus link there, I'll put it in my description too. But basically, it just goes to this page here and downloads Rufus, which creates bootable USB drives. And it's a pretty cool little tool. I've used it a few times on a few different things. So I'm going to get the portable one, just so I don't have to install it. It says the Rufus 44P. Um, I've already got it running, and here it is. So there's my Rufus in application, and I've got a 32 gig stick in there. So what I, what I would say is if you're running this, make sure the device you're installing your ISO on is correct. Double check. If you don't know for sure, unplug everything else except for that one drive that you want to replace, because the last thing you want to do is drop an ISO on top of something that you didn't really want to drop your ISO on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit select here. We're going to go ahead and pick XCPNG, which is right in my downloads. I'm going to say open, and it is, uh, I'm going to leave these all default. I don't think I need to change anything. And we're going to go ahead and just say quick. Yeah, that's good. Go ahead and just say start. So it's going to take right in ISO image mode. I'm gonna say whatever's recommended. We'll see what happens, see if it works. This might take a little bit of time. Um, the ISO is kind of big. Let's see, how big is this XCPNG? It is, oh, it's pff, tiny, 600 megs. That's it, it's done? No way, I'm gonna close that. It's still copying files. Okay, <clears throat> I was gonna say that's pretty fast. All right, 3%, 23%, I'm gonna pause it till it's done. All right, so we're back and it is completed. It went to 100%, says it's ready now. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and then we're gonna go try to boot up that system and I'm gonna try to do the screen share on that one too. So we'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like we're back. Um, interesting that the capture card <laughs> reads this as green. On a monitor, this would actually be a black background, but whatever at least there's something there i don't this was kind of weird like it took me a little while to figure out how to get the video to show up at all and so um i'm at least happy we got something so as you can see it's a precision dell precision tower 5810 i'm gonna go ahead and pick uh the general u disk because i don't want the boot manager that this this system currently has windows 10 on it it's a one terabyte ssd so I'm going to go ahead and try to boot. For, this is the uh, XCP one. We're going to try to boot from that and see what it does. Look at that. It's coming up. Okay, it's going to install. Install with alternate kernel. No serial safe. I'm just going to say install. That sounds right. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So by the way, XCP is based off of Zen. 
So you can see that on their website, which uh, other big products like Citrix, right? Citrix is based off of Zen. I believe, I could be corrected here too, but I believe that AWS virtualization like EC2 is Zen, I believe. You could look that up, but I think that's accurate. So it's a good, good base. So a couple things I wanted to mention as well. So if you're installing this on a system, you need to make sure that the system can support virtualization. So most of the time that's enabled in BIOS, uh, but sometimes it's not. So you might have to go into BIOS and enable virtualization options for your system before you'd wanna do this. Go ahead and pick. This tool can be used to install or upgrade XCPNG on your system or restore your server from backup. Installing it, XCP NG will erase all data on the disk selected for use. Perfect. To load a device driver, press F9. To set up advanced storage classes, press F10. I'm just going to say, okay. I don't want to do any device drivers. I think it's just going to find uh, the SSD that I've got. It's just plugged into SATA, I believe. Accept the user license agreement. Yeah, so let's see that. Eight, 894 gig. Thought it was 960. I said one terabyte. I guess we're 100 gigs shy. So. Okay, LVM block based may be faster. Thick provisioning. EXT file based may be slower, but it supports thin provisioning. To be honest with you, I kind of like the thin provisioning idea. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this. And I'm going to say use EXT instead of LVM because I want the ability to do thin provisioning. Plus. I have a, I, it makes me wonder how much easier it would be to back up your VMs if you use FileBase. So I would imagine like the VMs would sit there as some kind of like VHD or VMDK. Those are VMware and, and Windows. So I don't know what ES, or I don't know what um, Zen uses, but um, it's probably some, it's something similar to that. So we're going to go ahead and use the EXT file system instead of LVM. I just made that one up really fast okay so select installation source local media yep it's gonna install off of this usb stick um okay would you like to test your media yeah sure why not i don't think it's gonna be a problem but we'll go for it i would imagine that if it was wrong and you were in the middle of the installation you'd find out that it's not gonna work either way so and since I'm not doing a restore of this system, I don't care if it breaks halfway through the installation, I would just restart it. But it might be a good idea to verify the installation source. I'm assuming it does a check of the files there. Maybe it does like a hash or MD5 style validation that the files are what they're supposed to be, etc. No problems were found. Excellent. Please specify a password of at least six characters for the root account. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put in a super secure password. Looks good to me. Automatically, automatic DHCP should be configured. Please specify how the network should be configured for the management. I'm going to say static. And we're going to go with... Or are those commas? My bad. I need periods, not commas. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with 18. I'm going to go validate that really quick. But I'm pretty sure that's good. Oops. Uh, and then VLAN, I don't need that at the moment. I'll probably set something up with that later. I'm going to pause this really quick and just make sure that's a good IP. And we're back and it looks like it's a good IP. So I'm going to go ahead and just say OK to that. Host name. That's a terrible host name. What the heck? We're going to go with XCPNG G. <laughs> DNS server. DNS server is going to be the same. Uh, actually, I'll probably end up changing that at one point, but we'll just go with the default gateway as the DHC, or the DNS server. Uh, geographical area, huh? America. What other options do I have? US. There you go. Oh, we are in. Mountain. How should the local time be determined? NTP sounds great. I don't have an NTP server. 
Uh, we'll just go with the default one, ntp.org. This thing's not on the network yet, so I don't know if that'll work. Oh, look. Here we go. Ready. Yes, do it. All right, it's wiping out everything that's on that disk, so the Windows 10 that was there is now gone, which is fine by me because I don't need it. And now we're actually installing XCPNG on top of that. Mm. It's done. Would you like to install in supplemental packs? <clears throat> what kind of supplemental packs? I don't I don't know, <laughs> frankly. Let's see what's in the sub. Give me a list. Like, don't just say what supplemental packs. Sure. Okay, what else you got there? No, I don't, don't want to. We're not going to verify that again. That's stupid. I already verified it, bro. Okay. So I don't have any supplemental packs, I guess. So we're going to say no. It just made a full loop and went right back. All right, so completing the installation, I would imagine this is doing who knows what, setting the boot record. Who knows, honestly. <laughs> it's maybe, oh, maybe it's configuring, like, the network settings that we just put in. Now it's actually doing that. Yeah, good question. I have no clue. Whatever it is takes a long time to complete. All right, it's done. Please remove any media from the drive and press enter to reboot. Sweet. So I'm going to go ahead and rip this out. And we're going to go ahead and sit OK. And let's see if it keeps the video. It'll be real interesting because when it reboots sometimes, I think the video signal goes away. So it doesn't do too well with BIOS or text-based video on the, the Elgato HD60S. So we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Can't go wrong with that, I guess. Oh, look at that. It's gonna it's gonna auto pick XCPNG in one second. There we go. It probably doesn't have a graphical interface. I would imagine just like VMware ESX boxes, it's all text based at this. Why waste uh, CPU cycles for a virtualization host with a graphical interface? Only Microsoft does that with their uh, Hyper V. Of course, I haven't used Hyper V since 2012, so maybe they don't do that anymore. But they used to come up and it would be a Windows uh, desktop, basically. And XCPNG actually has graphics, so I might be a little wrong there. That was graphical. Clearly not just text. Air communicating to the TPM chip, huh? That's interesting. I don't think there's an issue with the TPM chip. I think it's stuck. I'm going to try rebooting. Maybe it wasn't stuck. All right, I'm gonna pull up the boot menu here. Windows Boot Manager, what the heck? Let's go to BIOS Setup. Oh my gosh, this looks terrible. I don't know why it's so pink. Windows Boot Manager, huh? Add boot option or delete boot option. Boot sequence. I don't want the Windows one. I don't know why it's there. Not that it matters. UEFI boot path security. Always boot to UEFI path requires. Eh. Okay, so secure boot. Disabled. Alright, uh, where's the TPM stuff? So those are the virtualization settings I was talking about. And that pink is something else. TPM security on wait what's enabled disabled mean tpm is on but security is enabled or disabled okay let's see what that says down there oh my ugly face is in the way when this option is selected, TPM will be disabled. Okay. When this option is selected, TPM will be enabled. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, say enabled. I guess it was disabled. So that would be why your TPM was disabled, I guess. Oop. Got to move my face again. I got to get to the apply button. Here's my apply button. That at least fixed that. I don't know what they mean by the unique identifiers for the CPU, though. So what exactly does that mean? Oh, 
This field limits the value the processor standards will support. Some operating systems will not complete installation when the maximum CPU ID function supported is greater than three. I don't know what that means. We're gonna enable it and see what happens. <laughs> We're just 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 uh, grasping at straws. I haven't researched what that means. I I can't I can't. Maybe it's like the length of the ID or I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, let's let it boot back into back into XCPNG and we'll see what it does. Oh my gosh, it took forever. What the heck? All right, go ahead and boot into XCP. Let's see if it gives us the same weird errors about CPU IDs and TPM chip. DOM has maximum 16 vCPU. Okay, I don't know what that means. We made it this far last time. Then it goes into a graphical interface of some kind. Ugh, but the TPM errors are not there. Oh, that's different. So I don't know if I should have done anything with the limit the CPU ID. I'll need to research what that actually means. Oh my gosh, it was just a matter of being super impatient, I guess. All right, so status display, network and management, authentication, virtual machines. That's pretty cool. You can actually see them from this. So ESX didn't do that. Disks and storage. Very cool. So I guess the next thing I would probably do would be um, just leave it like this. And then I need to uh, plug in the network cable. And then um, there, I'm gonna go ahead and get the, let me pull that page up really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and get what's called the Zen orchestration or orchestra web interface for this. And it looks like this and so uh, my intent is to manage it with this this Zen orchestra piece. And if you look at this like screenshot, I think this is what it's supposed to look like. And so it helps with administration management, backup dis and dis uh, disaster recovery. So I'm really hoping I can utilize some of these benefits of this tool that I didn't have with ESXi. So uh, that's the next thing in line. So, um, But we've at least got XCP installed and running on the system. And so I think I'll make another video on getting the Zen Orchestra going and connected to my system. Hope this was uh, useful for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.